And if I told you once, I ain't going to tell you twice. Salute all my real ones. Yeah, look, bro. We got what is the resolution of the eye? I don't know. 1080p, 4K, 8K, 12K, 90K? I don't know. Um... I don't know, in my family, when you get older, it'd it be one, wait, 12, 4K, 1K. I was about to say 1K. It just is one. Um, Before we get into the video, like button, subscribe button, notification bell, press no, let's go. No cap. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. I am at the White House in America's capital, Washington, D.C. America makes a lot of feature films every year. Hollywood. <laughs> Hold on, he's... He's actually, like, within the gates, though. But they don't make the most feature films every year. Nigeria makes more. But the country that makes the most films every single year is, it China? is India. Uh, every two years, the country of India fills up enough film with unique feature films to stretch all the way from this city, Mumbai, to where I live, in London. That's double what Hollywood produces in two years. That is a lot of movies. But is real life a movie? I've discussed the frame rate of the human eye before, but how does the resolution of the human eye compare to a camera or screen? VHS? Laserdisc? DVD? Blu-ray? IMAX? Numbers like these are pixel dimensions. When multiplied, they tell us the total number of picture elements an image is made up of, a figure often used to describe digital cameras. It might sound like more... Two megapixels, bro. I like, I'm not a big fan of taking pictures, but even I know two megapixels is amazing. Like, that's that's great technology right there. It's better, but to be sure, numbers like 1920 by 1080 are not resolutions per se. More pixels is only part of the equation. Resolution is about distinguishing fine details, and that depends on a lot of other factors. For instance, the amount of light the size of the sensors, what the millions of pixels are actually encoding, and how close the subject is. I mean, up close, Salvador Dali's painting of his wife looking at the Mediterranean can be resolved into boxes, but from afar, well, it's Abraham Lincoln. For crying out loud, on a small enough screen oh, from far enough away, low and high so-called resolutions on screens aren't even resolved differently from one another by your eye. How different nearby pixels are from one another also matters. This is called spatial resolution. For instance, if I go out of focus, the number of pixels in the video frame stays the same, but you can't resolve as much detail. Now, with all of this in mind, we can still compare human vision to a digital image by asking a better question. Assuming everything else is optimal, how many pixels would you need to make an image on a screen large enough to fill your entire field of view look like real life? without any detectable pixelation. Now we are getting somewhere. Kind of. Right. The analogy is still cruddy because a camera snaps an entire frame at once, whereas our eyes move around. The brain amalgamates their constant stream of information into what we call vision, sight. In fact, the image created by the eyeball alone during a single glance would hardly even be acceptable on a broken TV screen. We think our eyes create images like this picture Guy took of me with a camera. But for one thing, unlike a camera, you've got some stuff in the way. For instance, you are always looking at your own nose, right. and maybe even glasses if you have them. Luckily, our brains process those stimuli out because they don't matter and they don't change, but thinking those are the only differences is a pitfall, literally. Latinly. The fovea gets its name from the Latin for pitfall. The fovea is the pit on your retina that receives light from the central two degrees of your field of view, about the area covered by both of your thumbs when held an arm's length away. Optimal color vision and 20-20 acuity are only possible within that little area. When it comes to these limitations, XKCD has a brilliant illustration. It points out other problems like blind spots, literal blank spaces in our vision where the optic nerve meets up with the retina and no visual information is received. If you bought- But this is my, this is my question though. How come 
cats can see in the dark and we can't? And how come like their their like eyes are like like they, they it looks like they got eyelids in their eyes? How about riddle me that, Batman? Right? A camera. Let's get to the truth. You would return it. You can find your own blind UFOs, the flat earth, why your eyes don't blink. Like literally your retinas, that's, those are the things we want to know. Spot by closing your right eye, fixating your left eye on a point in front of you, extending your left thumb, and then moving it left of center, slightly, slowly, carefully, until it's not there anymore. Crazy. But of course, we don't see the world horribly like this, because our eyes are constantly moving, dragging foveal resolution wherever we need it. And our brain's complex visual system fills in details. I really was doing whatever the hell you just said. And makes a lot of guesses. What we actually see is a processed image, not computer generated imagery, but, well, brain neat generated imagery. Pause, pause. The neon color spreading illusion is a great way to demonstrate this difference. There is no blue circle in this picture. The white here is the same as the white here. A camera isn't fooled, a screen isn't fooled, only yeah, you brain. and the fleeting gumbo of ingredients you call perception is fooled. Our vision is not analogous to a camera. But our reformulated question can still be answered because human anatomy allows us to resolve, to differentiate certain angular distances. Famously, Roger N. Clark used a figure of 0.59 arc minutes as the resolution of the human eye to calculate based on the size of our... Our resolution is... Min Bro, what are you talking about? Total field... My, my resolution is 58 arc hours. How about that? to view how many of these distinct elements could fit inside of it. The result was an approximation of exactly what we want to know, how many individual picture elements, pixels, our vision can appreciate. His answer, 576 megapixels. That many pixels packed inside a screen large enough to fill your entire field of view, regardless of proximity, would be close enough to be undetectable by the average human eye. But we should factor in the fovea, because Clark's calculation assumes optimal acuity everywhere. It allows the eye to move around. But a single glance is more analogous to a camera snap. And as it turns out, only about 7 megapixels packed into the 2 degrees of optimal acuity the fovea covers during a fixed stare are needed to be rendered undetectable. It's been roughly estimated that the rest of your field of view would only need about 1 megapixel more information. Now that might sound low, but keep in mind that there are plenty of modern technologies that already use pixel densities better than we can differentiate. Right. As bad astronomer deftly showed, Apple's retina displays truly do contain pixels at a density average eyesight can't differentiate from typical reading distances. But the fact that there are screen sizes and pixel densities that can fool the human eye is not a sign that we see in any kind of megapixely way. Human vision just isn't that digital. I mean, sure, like a camera sensor, we only have a finite and discrete number of cells in our retina, but the brain adjusts our initial sensations into a final perception that is a wishy-washy, top-down processed blob of experience. It's not made of pixels, and furthermore, unlike a camera, it's not saved in memory with veracity like a digital camera file. Absolutely no evidence has ever been found for the existence of a truly photographic memory. What are you talking about, bro? I remember the day that I said, yo, you know what? I want to live. And I was in like, I was in even like, a part of the conception process, like, you know what I'm saying? I literally was just a spirit, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, yo, I remember when my spirit was a spirit. Think about that. You got to unplug your mind out the matrix, bro. Your eyes is closed. And what's even cooler is that not only do we not visually resolve the real world like a movie camera, we also don't narratively resolve conflict and drama in our lives like most movie scripts. The point of all of this, what I'm getting at, is an idea. An idea that initially drew me to this question. We play roles in the movie of life, 
but it's a special kind of movie. Cinematic victories and struggles are often discreet, resolved, like pixels with unbelievably perfect beginnings and endings, whereas the real world is all about ear resolution. I like how Jack Engstreich put it in Cinemania. In a movie, a character can make a decision and then walk away from the camera, across the street, and have the credits roll, freezing life in a perfect happily ever after. But in the real world, after you cross the street, you have to go home. The world goes on. That's not true. After you cross the street, you pull up to her crib, like, yo, I came to clap your joints. What, you, what is he talking about? Life doesn't appear in any particular pixel resolution or narrative resolution. Things are continuous. The world was running before you came around, and it will continue running after you are gone. Your life is a plot only insofar as it begins and ends and occurs in medias res. Tamara Chopin's illustration for Charles McGrath's Endings Without Endings says it perfectly. In life, there rarely is the end. There is only the and. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, well, that was that video. Uh, seven megapixels is trash. I'm sorry that that's what you humans have to deal with. Being that I'm from Mars, the resolution in my eyesight is infinity. And I'm going to end the video right there. My name is Rain. Catch you on the flip side. RC, peace. Let's wait for it. Dab on him.